there happy Thursday thanks for joining me here tonight all right we are continuing with the hummingbird embroidery we are actually gonna start the hummingbird tonight we finished the flowers last night so that is the plan uh, thanks for joining me here my name is Alyssa Thomas from penguin and fish where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners and I'm here every weeknight Monday through Friday at 8 30 p.m. Central Time and it's a time that we can relax and craft together here. Uh, so thanks again for joining me. Let's get going on this embroidery tonight. All right, everyone, here we are. Uh, we got all of the flowers done last night. I think it's looking really pretty vintagey and fun and, and I like it. So tonight we are going to start on the hummingbird here. Uh, so I think that'll be kind of fun to do. I don't know if we'll get them completely done, but I think we'll get pretty far here. Uh, and then actually tomorrow night, uh, I think we'll finish the hoops. I'll show you my favorite way of finishing uh, designs within the hoop. And then we'll we'll also add our little uh, bow here, our little uh, decorative ribbon on top, and uh, we'll finish that up. All right, I'm gonna zoom you way down here. And you may have noticed to my side here, we did talk about yesterday about coloring in embroideries. So this is one that we colored in, uh, so we color tinted it. So basically before stitching it, we added some colored pencil. Uh, I think we use, yeah, this looks like colored pencil. So we kind of put a little bit along the edge, a little bit more in the roof there. The roof almost looks tie-dyed, which is kind of cool. Uh, some in the snowflakes, just just kind of all around, added some color. Oh, and the birds for sure. And um, then we stitched on top of it uh, with some really pretty decorative floss. That's kind of fun. But yeah, so this is an example of uh, color tinting. And uh, we thought maybe also tomorrow it might be fun to kind of do a little demo of color tinting, assuming we get far with this tonight. Like I was thinking we could take like maybe the little um, little rosebud here or the, I don't know, hibiscus bug, this little bud, and we could uh, tint that with some color first, like what we did here, and then we could stitch on top. So we could do like a little mini demo of the of the color tinting. So I think that will be super duper fun. Uh, this is our tweet house pattern. Uh, it also, I think we have a bonus version of this pattern that has this Christmas version uh, with the, or the snow version, I suppose, with um, snowflakes and stuff on. So that's what we did here. So fun with that. Look at that uh, sparkly metallic thread and the metallic thread on the roof with this kind of like tie-dyed look. That is fun. I love the idea of a tie-dyed look. Maybe we play around with that idea tomorrow. We could do like a kind of a tie-dyed rose or something. Or we could do like a tie-dye look on the outside and then keep keep the rose just fine. I'm not quite sure how we accomplish that. I think just like we just put a bunch of colors down. <laughs> so that, that'll be fun. So I'm hoping we can play around with that tomorrow. But that that means we need to get done with with this guy here. Um, all right, I'm looking at the pattern again, just to get a sense of what colors go where, what stitches. It's all backstitch, except for we have a French knot. Um, I think, where to start? I kind of want to, well, I kind of want to do, I don't know, what do I want to do? Maybe some of this green, this green, uh, the dark green maybe? I guess for no reason then it'll feel like I got a lot done. Um, I think I'll start with an away knot again, like how I started this at the beginning, because I don't really have stitches to weave in the backs of. I could weave in the backs of, of here. Well, maybe we do that. Maybe I start with the pink, the pink beak. Oh, this is, is this enough? Uh, do I dare attempt to make this enough? I think we might get enough out of it. So this is like what this is what I have left of the pink uh, before having to cut some more. And all I need is there and back and weaving in the end. I think we're gonna we're gonna give it a go. So let's see how that that works. I'm trying to use up all my little scrappy scraps. This might have been a 
dumb idea though, but let's let's give it a try. So I'm gonna weave in the backs of these stitches here, and I'm gonna make the small little jump here, and I'm gonna stitch up one side of the beak and come back down the other side. I think maybe we'll have enough floss. All right, I'm weaving back and forth three times, trying to grab as much thread as I can. I know I'm not going through much here, so I'm just gonna try and grab a bunch on the way back up. All right. So back stitch, but I'm gonna do that forward stitch, then back stitch, just to preserve the thread, just because I don't have hardly any of it here. Hey, I'm happy to be working on, on this guy. Usually, typically, I would have done this this first, the little hummingbird. I'm not sure why I started on the flower. I think maybe because um, this red flower, I mean, that's like a big swath of color to get done right away, and I thought, oh, it'll make me feel like I got a lot done right away. Whereas the hummingbirds got, oops, I'm, I was going to go the forward and backwards because I don't have a lot of floss. Let's do that. Um, but the hummingbird switches colors a lot, so I think maybe that's why. Like, now let's get this big, bright red bit done first. Come on. There we go. Gosh, I really don't have a lot of floss here. Sometimes I would have woven in with this amount of floss left. Ah, so let's hope I can get all the way down here. But yeah, I would love to do a little bit of that color tinting tomorrow. That would be fun. Just a little bit of coloring, a little bit of stitching. See what we come up with. But that means we gotta get far on this tonight. And I do want to finish this like, in the hoop too. That'd be fun. Ah, there we go. We have enough. This is gonna go right to there, I think. And we'll let that last little stitch just stay as as one stitch like so great all right let's weave in some stitches and uh then we can start with some of these greens on the body i think Could maybe do the red and get that over with then you know just get color by color Get colors done like right now we're officially done with the pink which is cool so we could do the the red neck here uh let's see Ooh, that's a a little bit of floss let's see i got another piece of red what's longer let's use the longer one oh they're about the same this one's a little bit longer okay so I think let's do the red, then we'll be completely done with the red. Then, then we'll pick a green to do, either the body green or the head green. This, this uh, scrap didn't feel like it had any coating on, so thought I'd give it a go. Hope everyone had a lovely, lovely Thursday. basically clean today. Well, that's got to get done too, I suppose. All right, I'm going to weave in the end here and uh, get this little back and forth. Oh, I guess it's this little part too. I always have the the um, line art, the, uh, the, design, the design near me so I can double check the colors and everything. snip this little extra bit off. One strand was just a hair longer. There we go. Okay, well, 
let's root our path here. I think I'll go to the outside. Let's go, let's go outside, inside, and down. Or maybe we can go outside, up, and then like this last little bit. I think we'll do that. Um, okay, so Pamela's asking, do you have any trouble or worry regarding the thread conditioner leaving any residue on the fabric that may come back as a stain? So I'm relatively new to using the thread conditioner. Uh, I've not had any obvious problem yet. Um, I've been using it for a few embroideries. I suspect that uh, if it's on something that you'll wash, it'll come out. Um, Nothing noticeable for me right now. Like it hasn't had like oil bleed out or anything out of the fabric. Um, that is uh, in the back of my head as a concern. So I guess I'm, I'm sort of testing it too, but I, I haven't had any problem with it at all. Um, that'd be great to run a test on though. I mean, I'm using a cotton, 100% cotton fabric. Uh, so I don't know how it would react to something else man i'd love to do some tests and some research on that though i'm i'm gonna dig into that some more but no i mean that was that was originally a concern especially because i hadn't ever used it with embroidery floss i'm like Ugh, is it gonna just like be this whole mess on embroidery floss because it's so thick but it, it's been nice it's been um i mean it holds my threads together it, it gives it a little strength um to combat like the friction of going in and out of the fabric and it smells good <laughs> this I mean I think that's really the main reason I'm using it is just it smells nice it has kept uh, the twisting down a little bit um, but no I have not seen any like residue or like any any side effect from it let's call it that I guess Although I haven't run a zillion tests on it either, so um, I'm not saying there wouldn't be side effects, but I have not seen any yet. Let's let's call it like that. Ooh, Robbie Lynn says I'm halfway. I'm about halfway done on the hummingbird embroidery. Yay! Exciting. It's been fun seeing some posts of them and progress of them in the penguin and fish crafters group. I'm having fun with this one. I think it's just sweet and vintagey. This one would be really pretty in a quilt or um, uh, on a tea towel or something, I think. Ooh, hey, Terry from Rochester. Not too far away. I bet you it was a zillion degrees by you too. All right, plenty of thread. There we go, we got that guy done. That is it for the red. We are crossing out colors. I love that when you get to, uh, when you're near the end of an embroidery and uh, you start having your little mini finishing wins. So we've finished the red. Two colors done. Uh, let's see, I think three to go here. keep that for a pom-pom at some point okay um I think I might do the bottom green so that's this whole bottom part of the body and then this kind of arm of this front wing and then then it continues up here and we got a couple little extra bits in there so those we'll have to sneak in here and there. Um, those will be like some jumps potentially, but we'll be stitching over it. So maybe it's not going to be that big of a deal. So let's, let's see. I don't, I don't think I have much, I think this is all I got left for, for green. So I'm not going to be using that for anything most likely. So I got to get some fresh green out of the skein. I think this is my, only the second time getting more out of here. So I'm getting my normal like 24 inches or so. Uh, let's split split it into three strands so I'm just going to isolate uh, one strand at a time there we go 
zoop, just pull it right on out. Grab another one, zoop, and come here, zoop. <laughs> I like doing that. So fun, so quick. Uh, all right, plop them back together. Run, just run my hand down it, and we'll give this a pass through the conditioner, most mostly because it smells yummy. But it'll help like hold these little strands together too. Oops, got a little squiggle in there. There we go. All right, I think we're good. Plenty on there, and this smells yummy. All right, needle. So I'm going to weave in the backs of these red stitches here, and then we'll come and do this, ugh, except for I got these, this like down and up situation here again. Um, but what we could do is instead I could start here. Here we go. This is a better path. Um, cause if I go down here and then come back up, then I don't have anywhere else to go. I have to jump back down here. But if I start here, I can go up and then cross to here and come down, and then come at the bottom and then go up and back down. That's a good path. Although if I run out of floss, I'll just have like three stitches to do somewhere in here, but I suppose what you can do. I'm gonna do it that way though. And then I can do these, these everything above these like swishy lines. Um, I can do those all separate maybe. Maybe I'll do the light green on the bottom part first, or maybe I'll get the blue. That's the little wispy wisps here. The um, the motion blur, <laughs> I suppose, is what you could call it. He's moving his wings so fast. Can't even see him. They're whooshing. Maybe it's a, a whoosh line. That's, I think that, that sounds accurate. So it's just the front part of his arm here. This bottom part of the wing is uh, the lighter green. Ooh, this I might. This is where I might start stitching upside down because it's on uh, it's on this side of the hoop, and I always like having my hand here. And if I stitch it right side up, then I got my hands gotta stretch all the way across here. So I'm just getting a little bit more comfortable for my left hand so I can feel like every stitch come through. So that just, that means I'm upside down. Oh, good luck with that, Jennifer. Oh, the eye. Um, Oh yeah, the eye is the dark green too. You're right. Uh, the fresh basil is the dark green. Oh. Maybe I'll sneak up and do that right now before I get too far up. I'm gonna just kind of travel in the back of the stitches here, I think. And let's get that French knot of the eye. Good catch. Last French knot. Thanks, Colleen. There we go. That would have been a bummer to have to come back for just that one little stitch. There, now I'm traveling back to kind of where I left off. There we go. That felt good getting that done. Another thing done, all the, all the French knots are done. Now we just have all the little, little uh, back stitches left. Ooh, 
Yeah, I might do the whooshes next. Um, just because then they'll give me things to weave into versus like jumping across. Because uh, you might see that on the back. Got a little fuzzle in there. There we are. Okay, and now I'm gonna jump over to the to the, to the um, tail, I suppose. Oh, thanks, Dee Dee. And I might actually need more of the green, but that's okay. This is kind of a lot to get in one strand. Oh, Dee Dee says, I wish we had hummingbirds here in Australia. They are, they are fleeting here too. Uh, we do have, um, uh, I saw one when we were in Wisconsin at my parents. Um, but I don't see them a lot. When John's parents lived in California, there they they seemed like they would just come all the time. I remember we sat, tried to get photos of them. So they like, you know, bright things too. So we, we had a nice camera. Oops, got a little knot here. We had a nice camera and we were sitting in like in a chair underneath the feeder to try to get a photo and it, it came right up to the lens of the camera to check it out. And I remember we got a really good photo of, uh, of the uh, hummingbird just like right up, right up and personal. Well, you'll have to tell us how it goes, Jennifer. Jennifer. Um, yeah. I'll be thinking of ya. For sure. I mean, both ways, it's uh, just a question mark, right? Yep, I'm gonna definitely need more floss. Well, that's okay. I'll have enough floss to do these other little bits too, maybe. I still might um, do the blue first. Well, we'll finish the body, but I might just um, stop the green, like whatever I have left, and work on those blue whooshes. Busy tail feathers here. It'd be, it'd be neat to be a hummingbird, zipping around everywhere. Everything must seem in slow motion to them.
definitely won't have enough for this belly, but we'll get it started. Yeah, we did, definitely did not have choices. I mean, I guess was there's the choice to wait. Um, so I guess that's a choice. But we, we, um, uh, my husband got the Johnson and Johnson, and I got the Pfizer. And neither of us really had any um, immediate side effects. So that was good. All right, we're going to finish the front of this belly, but not that inside line. That will be a fresh floss, but I might actually stop and do the blue, and then we'll grab the next floss. Because I, I, I like the idea of having the blue whooshes in there to weave in ends and stuff, too. So I kind of like, kind of want to get those in there and done. I keep having, like, one little thread that doesn't want to be all lined up with the rest. Let's pull on it again. There we go. That's better. I probably could have done that forward and stitch and then a back stitch to stretch this out a little bit more, but oh well. We'll just have a tinsy bit that I have to get back here and do. Yeah, we're running out. I think this might be the last. So definitely didn't win thread chicken. I suppose I could have tried a little bit harder, but this has got to be my last stitch here. Boo! This is a pretty green, though. I like this. Let's get that blue done. I have just been talking about it. It's been nagging at me, I think. So I'm going to weave in here, and then maybe I'll do this side, come up and get these two lines, come back. Ugh, we do have some extra little blue little wingies. I wonder, do I do those at the same time? Probably. I might just jump across and do it, because they'll, they'll be um, have other stitches in there too. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Let's just start stitching and see what happens on this one. All right, got my, I don't know, 24 inches or so. Yeah, we didn't get to choose either. I think when I signed up, it they said it was going to be Moderna, but then when I got to the pharmacy, they it was Pfizer all of a sudden. So even, even when they tell you what it is, you never know. That's interesting, though, that, that you guys have a, a age limit. Ugh, it's also confusing and crappy. Crappy all around. All right. There we go. All right. I think we'll weave in here since that's the closest to the line. And then uh, I guess I'm kind of starting in the middle 
of the line. We're going to do like a weird circle here, I think. We're just going to start right here and work our way down the line. Maybe I'll do the sewing technique on this. Let's get it a little looser in the hoop. There we go. I, I feel like that super helps with the sewing technique. So in and out is the sewing technique for embroidery versus the stabbing. So I think I'm going to, well, let's get it tight in the hoop again here. I think I'm going to jump up to these little wiggle lines. It'll be a little bit of a jump across a gap, but I think we're fine. We'll go here. top line. I'll have to come back. This little wing here is blue and this little wing here is blue so I'll have to kind of jump back to get those maybe. Actually might be out of thread by then so we'll see. out of the way so I can see my line here, see how big my stitch is going to be. switching to stabbing. I'm at a weird angle here. Let's let's just stab through the rest. Having trouble just seeing where the next stitch should land because the loss is in the way. Just gonna do it like this. Oh, I suppose we have that bottom. I'm like really, my path is so weird tonight so I haven't done this bottom bit. I gotta get back to there somehow. <laughs> <laughs> but this is going to be blue and this and this, so I don't know. I suppose I have to jump back down here and get the rest of that blue first. Hey, I did not plan this out very well. I should have just jumped up. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should have stitched the other green first and then woven in the, into those ends, but this will be fine too. All right, but I am going to head back down to this lower line and just finish that up. The 
whoosh lines. shimmy sham back here and we'll get that little zoom zoomy line up top there so instead of just jumping over there I'm gonna just weave into the backs of some stitches get to there and now we'll jump up there So I think I am going to just leap over to the next part and just try and get get them all done with this single floss. Hopefully I have, oops, one more. Hopefully I have enough. So I'm not too worried about this big jump because I'll be stitching all these and that will hold down, hold down the thread um, once I stitch those. Ooh, Sylvia, that sounds awesome. John cooked some brats and zucchini on the on the grill tonight. Ooh, and he picked lettuce from our garden. So that was our first first little harvest from the garden. That was delicious. Pretty neat to just uh, be able to go out and grab some lettuce. All right, so this last little wing bit is the last of the blue, and I think. I think I'll have enough thread for that for sure. For sure, sure. And that will be that for blue. Another color done. Yeah, so I think we'll for sure finish this hummingbird today. Uh, so that's kind of nice to know. Like if you wanted to, you know, I don't know, just stitch the hummingbird and make it into like a patch or something like that or stitch it to something else, but just the hummingbird, um, it should only, you know, it, in theory, you can do it in one sitting, which is pretty nice. All right. All those flowers took a bunch of time that is it for the blue another one done so I think why don't we um, I, I, I want to do the lime green now I know we are, we're not done with the dark green but I want to get I want to do some more lime green okay so I do have a good piece of floss here and it looks like I have another one I'm gonna use the longer one first just because maybe maybe I won't have to change in the middle this looks like I haven't run it through the thread or anything yet. Oh, your husband says you need a large magnet for <laughs> for the needles. Uh, yeah, that that freaks me out, the idea of stepping on a needle or something like that. It freaks me out a little bit. Uh, my mom sometimes puts applique pins in her chair arm and that freaks me out <laughs> just gonna get stabbed by things all right so i'm gonna start this green i'm trying to think of a path so i mean you know all this is the green the this lime green and then, uh, you know, a bunch of 
feathers up here. This guy too. So I'm kind of thinking, okay, this is a maybe a weird path, but I'm thinking of weaving in here, then coming up and doing this one little feather, then jumping down and doing here, and then I guess coming around the head, and then I'll have to travel back, and then here, coming up, and then I got this wing and this wing, and then that'll be it for this green, and I think this will be enough loss for that and then we'll just have to finish up um, with the dark green and we'll we'll be done so I think I think that's my travel plan here I always like having a little bit of a plan Ooh, these two colors are really pretty together I should do some a design just with this lime green and this winter morning blue those are really pretty together blend together kind of nice. There we go. Alright. Oh, did I do the right? Yeah, the top line. Alright, so I'm going to just jump over here. I know this is a little bit of a leap compared to what we've been doing, but we're doing it. Ooh, that's a mess. There we go. to check it out. Amy says that she finished the jellyfish uh, embroidery and the French knots didn't take as long as she thought, so that's cool. I'll have to take a look at that. Alright, I'm going to jump down now to this bottom part of the wing. Yeah, it's just this wing. Then here, the whole head, and then two little feathers over here. I guess by wing I mean I mean feathers. Ooh, this crispy green is looking really pretty. This lime green next to this uh, more um, the fresh basil that more like kind of evergreen green. I'm just reading the comments. Colette said, uh, mentioned about to remember this French knot for the eye. I think I said Colleen when I said that. Man, maybe I need to get my eyes checked. Ugh. So thanks for Colette for letting me know. All right, I'm getting all this green here. This is pretty for the head of head of him. Brandy says, love these two greens together. Yeah, it's just looking really sharp, I think, with these two greens. Just really kind of fun. They complement each other, I think. Then when you get that bright red in there, I mean, that helps make the greens pop, too. through this guy. He's going pretty quick. Oop. Gotta pull my floss out a little. 
so yeah i think definitely tomorrow first thing we will finish up this hoop i'll show you like my favorite way of finishing a hoop it's super easy and you can do it with like leftover uh, thread that you have from the project um, easy peasy and then we'll do that thread tinting we'll just play around with that a little bit just trailing back up and trailing back down along the head there to get to this spot here just has yeah those two wings and then he's or two feathers and then he's done oh I had tons of thread I, I had lots that's always nice and I don't have to feel like I'm playing thread chicken This one and oops, the one a little ways away from this one. Still gotta get that dark green back. I think I might, for the dark green, just do it that little bit there and then end it and then start fresh up on the top here versus traveling all over to try and get back up there. All right, that's it for the lime green looking all peppy that looks really pretty okay let's weave it into some stitches here let's go over here all right i'm gonna go one more all right Last up, the rest of the green here. Let's run it through the thread conditioner. Little Belly, you're first. It's a bit annoying because I gotta weave it in and then stitch like three stitches and then um, weave it in again, but what you gonna do? So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna weave it in and start fresh up at the top there. All right. 
suppose maybe I'll just work my way around, I suppose. Um, so I'm gonna start here, then I guess just jump to here. Ooh, this is one of those up-down things, though. So we'll go up, and then jump down and do the other one. I think that's what we'll do. And then we'll get that last, last feller. The last little bit on this, and then we're done. So that took, that, that took just the, um, just the right amount of time to finish up. I can't do the loop method um, because I'm using the three strands. So that would really only be with the two strands. Um, unless there's some magic way to do it. Which there very well could be. All right, I'm going to go in the backs of these stitches here just so there's not a huge jump. And we'll do this line first. Okay, getting left hand involved again. So I can feel the stitches. Jump down to here. We are just about there. It's kind of fun ending on on the hummingbird. Feeling like I'm running a little low on floss, but I think we'll have plenty for for this. haven't had any of those big giant crazy June bugs flying around this year. Last year they were so all over the place. I don't know what made me think of that. Maybe just this hummingbird. Uh, but like the June bugs I just feel like they're drones without a pilot. Like they just they just fly like at you and then bounce off of you or bounce off of walls. They're just kind of crazy giant bugs. Definitely haven't seen them like last year. Oh, stray fuzzle, let's get you. All right, our last little wing, or butterfly, jeez. <laughs> feather, a feather is what they're called. Last little feather. 
little baby hummingbird feather. and we're done. Oh, Lisa says the cicadas are horrible here right now. We have not had any of those here. And we get them, but like not till like August. But you know, when everyone's talking about like, oh, the cicadas are coming and all that, we have not, or I have not had that experience here which thank goodness because it sounds horrible <laughs> all right let's check it out let's get it all nice in the hoop again we'll reframe it in the hoop tomorrow too before we uh finish it up but it's always kind of nice to to see we'll probably actually give it a little press too for good measure um but there we are our little hummingbird uh, guy and uh, in four days, so we get a whole day tomorrow to finish up the hoop, and then we'll do, we'll play around with some thread tinting, not thread tinting, some fabric tinting and embroidery, like what we did in this piece here. I just kind of want to take an element from here, um, maybe even, maybe even this flower or something, but then we can like shade it in, we can practice doing some of that, or maybe just even do it on the outside and then stitch uh, like trace the design. I think that'll be kind of fun. Little, uh, little, uh, stitching experiment tomorrow. So, all right. There we are. Finished embroidery. So this is the hummingbird embroidery of the month. Uh, keep posting your progress on it or your finished pieces over in the penguin and fish crafters group. It is so awesome to see them there. Uh, and you know, and if you have any questions ever, just ask them in there. Uh, on anything and um we'll give them an answer <laughs> so all right you guys so thank you just uh checking out any comments so uh i think we're good so thank you so much again for joining me here and uh, tomorrow we'll frame it up all nice in the hoop we'll add our little bow and we'll do that fabric uh tinting uh, embroidery little experiment here uh, so grab some come with some crayons or colored pencils and uh, we'll do that tomorrow as well. All right, have a great evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.